Tommy wants to know, Jesse, my guy, are you nervous or confident? I'm assuming this is about Trey Lance. A little bit of both, if I'm being real with you, Tommy. Um, I, I'm confident in what Trey Lance will bring to this team. I just don't know if you're going to see it right away. And in this situation where it's two must-win games to go to the playoffs, I also know how finicky this fan base is. And if he does not perform right away, heaven forbid if they lose a game because of Trey, the dumpster fire that will ensue, I do not trust that fans will be patient. That's what I'm nervous about. As far as Trey panning out and being a great player, I am very confident in that. You know, I, I've said it many times. Everybody knows where I stand with Trey Lance. Into 2023, the cream will rise to the top, and Trey Lance will be there. But for right now, he hasn't played. He's being forced into a tough situation. That's what makes me a little bit nervous. So we'll see what happens. And, and by the way, people are sleeping on the Texans. Texans have beaten some good teams, and their pass defense is, I, I believe, the sixth-ranked pass defense. So it's not like he's coming in and playing a patsy uh, pass defense and he's going to be able to do his thing. His work is going to be cut out for him. So do not be shocked if he struggles a little bit, right? So that being said, perfect segue. <laughs> Realistic expectations for Trey. I think I just gave mine. I do owe this real quick, though. For the donation, Tommy, thank you. All right, so I've just laid out my expectations for Trey. Not my expectations, but just some of my worries, my reserves. Lou, I'll let you go first. You, as a Charger fan, we just talked about all the great quarterbacks that have come through there in the last 20-plus years. I believe you have a really good one right now, Justin Herbert. Um, for me, I've laid my claim in three quarterbacks coming out of the draft over the last five years. Herbert was one. Josh Allen was another. Trey Lance is the third, right? And being an Oregon fan, I actually pegged Herbert three games into a sophomore season before really anybody knew who this kid was. He was making pro throws back then, and I, I knew, and, and this is sacrilegious to say when you're an Oregon Duck fan, especially then, but saying he was going to be a better player overall than Mariota was a big deal then. And I said he would be a top five to seven quarterback when it was all said and done in the league. I really saw that from him. So seeing that you guys played the rookie right away, I know it wasn't what the plan was, but that's what happened. Trey Lance sitting most of this year and now coming into this situation. What are your realistic expectations for Trey Lance? Well, do you guys think Shanahan messed up Jimmy G's thumb on purpose? He's like, just like how the Chargers messed up Tyrod Taylor's lung. Uh, <laughs> conspiracy theory here. Um, all kidding aside, expectations should be highs and lows. Uh, going into the draft, I had uh, Trey Lance in my second-ranked quarterback uh, uh, from this past year. And when they moved up, all the chatter with Mac Jones, I'm like, it has to be Trey Lance. It has to be Trey Lance. He reminded me a little of Steve McNair. He's big. He's physical. He's got, he's got a good arm. Uh, he just need a little more time, I think, to develop, you know, mentally from, like, you know, reading coverages. I know he, he ran a pro-style offense, but still, it's, you know, it wasn't Division One and what have you. So, all, all that being said, I think he'll do fairly good against the, the, uh, Houston. Houston has no idea really what to prepare for. I know they got a little film against the Cardinals, but he's you're hoping that he's a way be he's way better off now than he was – uh, you know, in the earlier of the season, uh, I could picture him 250, 270 total yards, two touchdowns, two turnovers, up and down the situation. I think that's I think that's uh, realistic and, and fair. Um, <clears throat> it's the second week that I think that would be giving me concern. I believe you guys play the Rams, correct? Yeah. Yep. That is where um, I think when you have a rookie quarterback, you just don't want them to look lost. You want that. You want to see the flashes. You want to see that. Oh. That's that's why we took him. So whether that's him just looking comfortable in rhythm, uh, you know, efficient, uh, athletic plays, you know, rolling out of the pocket, what have you, you just don't want them to look lost. And I think you have to really temper your expectations. Uh, it's good that all your your playmakers are healthy on the offensive side of the ball, and they'll be able to help them out. But uh, like I said, it's the first game. I have no issue. I think he's going to be well because there's be limited tape on him. It's that second game that'll give me a little concern. But overall. I think Lance is the this offseason 
Kyle is going to be like a a, a, a mad, like a scientific madman designing all these all these plays and the options with Trey Lance. So I think you're really going to see him explode on the scene next year. I and I actually forgot about this. Chargers just played the Texans, yeah. Yeah. And they just lose. Okay. Thank you, so, Jesse. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I know. I, I know. It seems like I was trying to be a jerk there. I really was. I really wasn't. It was just like, oh, I could have set that up a little bit different. Like you literally just saw yeah. the Texans defense, and yeah. and they are. They're a better pass defense, probably than what maybe even you expected going in. Right? It's one of those games where you're like, oh, Texans. That's that's a win. We mark that off. But reality is, they're not playing bad football, and that defense, that passing defense in particular, is a good pass defense. So. What about you, Weston? What do you think realistic yeah. expectations are? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at this from two lenses. And just so you know how I, f- I feel about Trey Lance, do you remember the North Dakota State hype video that they put out when he was drafted? Do you remember seeing that oh, across yeah. Twitter? Yeah. Yep. I made that video. I'm in that ba- on my reaction. That's my, like, literally only claim to fame ever. I love it. That's uh, and, and his head's been so big since that. You ever, should see him walk ever around since. town, man. Check it out. <laughs> uh, do you sign autographs is what I want to know after this. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. For you, I do, sir, for sure. But it's got to be my, my jersey with my name on it. Yeah, Listen, for tell, sure, yeah. tell about your OnlyFans page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who listens to this, so I'll keep that out of it. So, But, Jesse, I'm like you in all seriousness, like, I think Trey will become, you know, the cream of the crop out of this class. I think his ceiling is exponential, but like any player in the NFL, it's about situations. It's about scenarios. It's about coaching. You know, you've seen a lot of good talent flounder. I think he's on the right team. I think it was good that he was able to sit for a while and learn how to just be a pro, right? Understand what his expectations are from his coaching and how his predecessor is, destroyed by this fan base and 49er fan base. I do love you, but you are the most impatient people in the entire world um, is what it really comes down to. Cause I agree. I think if he has one bad game, world's on fire, like literally world's on fire. Everybody's bring back 10 or draft another quarterback or whatever it is. But immediately, what do I expect? Honestly, I expect him to struggle. He's a rookie. It's his second start against a good pass defense. That's on a roll a little bit right here. Like, you know, practice, looks a lot different than games, right? You know, in this day and age with with COVID going on, you barely even practice. You don't contact each other. You're in meeting rooms. You're on Zoom meetings. Like, it's not happening. Um, The game moves a lot faster. Um, I would say, you know, our only exposure to Trey was in Arizona, where actually I thought he played relatively well. If you go, if you went back and watched the tape for a first-time starter, no no best offensive weapon in George Kittle. Ayuk was literally still in the doghouse at this point in time. Like, what was he to do? And I know there's 16, 16 runs, blah, blah, blah. Not all those were designed runs, right? Would I like to see him not run as much? Yeah, like he's he's still young. I want to see him be mobile in the pocket. But all the things that make a good quarterback, developing your rapport with wide receivers, getting through your progression confidently, um, reading defenses pre-snap. We talked about the motion that, that Kyle does. All of that takes time. That does not happen overnight. And that's why some pundits wanted him to play immediately because the more repetition, right? They're using Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson as the example of like, they're getting this under their belt now. But you know what? Those teams had no expectations. This team had entirely different aspirations and expectations of their football team. But everything that makes a good quarterback takes time. It's not going to happen in his first week out there. I agree with Lou. If we see somewhere north of two and a quarter from in a from a passing our perspective, a couple touchdowns with a couple turnovers, that is actually success, right? And you have to remember he's uber athletic, right? So in those breakdown scenarios, I just want to see him use his legs a little bit. I want to see him slide. I want to see him get out of bounds. I don't want to see him take hits. But if you think he's coming out here and lighting the world on fire, you are literally kidding yourself. Like that is not going to happen. You mentioned Jimmy's a net zero quarterback. What I define that is he doesn't win you the game. Hopefully he doesn't lose you the game, right? If Trey can do that and make one or two plays with his legs, that is a successful outing. That is how you will win this first game. I won't even look at the second game yet because I need to see how the first game goes. But if you are not expecting him to struggle, you're naive, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. And and um I, I love what you said there. If he can just be a net zero quarterback, that would be great. We don't want him to go out there and lose the game. But I do want to be clear, if that happens, guys, we're talking about a rookie quarterback. We have to be willing to go through these growing pains. Like, especially if you're a guy like me, where 
you were calling for Trey all season, wanted him to start week one, wanted Jimmy to not be on the team, wanted them to take the Patriots approach where they got rid of the problem before it became a problem. That's what I wanted to see happen. So if you're like that, or you've been calling for Trey all season, you have to know that growing pains are going to happen. You have to be patient. It's not about this year. As much as we want the 49ers to make the playoffs, yes, that would be fantastic, especially if he could go in, get some playoff experience, maybe play well, maybe even win a game. I would love that. But it's not about this year. We're looking at the future for Trey Lance. This team was never going to win a Super Bowl this year. It wasn't going to win it with Jimmy. So the expectation can't be that we're going to win it with Trey Lance. These are his first starts. And as far as what, what Christian says here, what can Kyle do to set him up for success? Run the ball. It sounds like Mitchell should be back this week. You've got a healthy Jeff Wilson Jr. Those two running backs can get it done. They should shoot for 40-plus run attempts like they did against the Rams. Make this game easy for them. In my opinion, another thing they can do, which they did almost none of it, get them out on bootlegs. Let them make easy reads. Cut the field in half. Give him a high-low read and allow him to run the ball as an option. You do that and make the game easy for him, it's going to look easy for him. And he'll probably look better than what he actually is at this point. I believe that Kyle Shanahan can can definitely dial it up. I'm a little bit nervous about the offensive line, knowing that Trey's a mobile quarterback. We saw quite a few penalties in that Arizona game. They've gotten used to playing with Jimmy G. So now that Trey Lance is playing, can they hold up? Do they know when he's going to run? Do they know when they need to protect him and hold versus just letting a lineman go and let him make the play? So I think that's going to be the, one of the bigger growing pains that nobody's talking about. People want to talk about Trey and what he brings to the game. People want to talk about his athleticism and all these things and can Kyle coach him up and, and all of that. Is this offensive line ready to play with a mobile quarterback? I think that is going to be possibly a bigger issue than all of it, to be real with you.